takes the brain's focus and centers it on the low back muscles. And what I found is that a lot of times that is what's making the back pain a little bit worse. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, I'm gonna go over a pretty common problem and that is back pain, specifically back pain when walking. So before I get into my thoughts on this topic, there are a variety of different causes or reasons or things that can cause back pain. This is just one reason, so don't think that this is the only reason that your back might be bothering you, but it is a pretty common reason that I see, so hopefully you can learn from the exercises, but also be aware that this is not the only thing that could be causing your back to hurt. A lot of times uh, patients come in and they say that their back really starts to hurt after walking long distances or walking for a long period of time. And most are aware that this is probably related to their posture. I mean, we're all guilty of it and we've been hearing it for probably since childhood. Don't slump your shoulders, don't hunch over, stand up taller. So we all kind of already have that ingrained in our head that back pain is strongly associated with poor posture. But over the years, there's one thing I have noticed and that is when I ask someone, what do they think they need to do to correct their posture? Everyone just lifts their chest. And again, pretty common for most of us that if we've been told our shoulders are slumped over, we're just gonna lift our chest up to stand up taller and correct our posture. Unfortunately, what that does is it puts the focus or our brain's focus when we say lift your chest or straighten your back, it takes the brain's focus and centers it on the low back muscles. And what I found is that a lot of times that is what's making the back pain a little bit worse. If you look at a picture of the back, the low back muscles are really, really tiny muscles versus the hip muscles, which are much larger muscles. So it is really our hip muscles and our glute muscles that are doing most of the work to help keep us upright. So although I am going to give some exercises a little bit later in this video, my number one tip or recommendation in this video that has worked extremely well, and I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years from patients that this immediately solved their back pain, is to stop thinking about lifting your chest or straightening your back and instead think about squeezing your bottom or tucking your bottom in. Other people have said, pretend like you have a quarter in between your bottom cheeks and you're trying to hold it there. I personally believe a $100 bill works better. My bottom muscles will work a lot harder for a $100 bill than my bottom muscles will work for a quarter. Whatever you need to do to cue those muscles to keep that bottom in, now what you're doing is you're taking the focus off of those low back muscles and you're putting the focus on the bigger glute muscles and achieving the same result. As I had stated earlier, most of us know or we've heard over the years that posture leads to back pain. What this does by squeezing your bottom or tucking your bottom in is it lines everything directly on top of each other. And when everything is stacked up on top of each other, that is when we are the most efficient. All the bones are straight up on top of each other, and what I like to say is the bones just kind of rest on each other. When you start to get a little bit of an angle in the hip region, now it's like all the back muscles is just like outriggers trying to hold a staff vertical. Now all those muscles are having to work really, really hard to prevent the top half of the structure or the top half of the pole from toppling over, and that's when the back starts to hurt. That's when the muscles fatigue when you start to walk longer distances. So again, vertical alignment is the goal. My tip is to change the cue from lifting your chest to squeezing your bottom in 
or holding on to that hundred dollar bill. So now that is the queuing side of it. So that is a different way to think when you are walking. So hopefully you guys will find that helpful when you actually start to put that into practice. But I don't want to just end there. I do want to also show you a few exercises that will also help to improve your posture. You know me, if you've been watching me for a while, I always like to do a progression and most of the time the progression starts laying down on a mat. I just find it's an easier, safer position, more comfortable position to really isolate and really feel certain movements so of course again we're going to start laying down and you're basically just going to work on what i just said trying to hold that quarter in or hold that dollar bill in there or that hundred dollar bill in between your bottom cheeks you're just going to be squeezing your bottom now the next group we're going to do to really isolate those glutes is again with a dowel rod you know me i like to use this dowel rod a lot if you do have weakness on one side of your body and you can't hold on to the dowel rod definitely pick up one of the blue straps that i have in the links in the description below and you can strap your involved or your weaker hand to the rod and you're basically going to do what i call like a modified deadlift so you want your feet flat on the ground and you're basically just going to bring the dowel rod towards the ground. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring it back up into your lap. Now, when you bring it back up into your lap, you have to really think about squeezing your glute muscles and actually pushing your feet into the ground because there's two ways that you could get back to this vertical or upright position. One is to activate the glutes and the legs. The other one is to use your low back muscles. So you really do have to think about pushing your feet into the ground to really feel what it feels like to activate those glutes to get that body up into a vertical position. Now the progression from here would just be to move to a higher surface. Um, I, I'm not showing this stool up against a wall, but you really do want it up against a wall because if not, the stool is gonna slide out from under you. But if you have like a countertop height stool, that'll work well. And you're just basically gonna do the same thing, only now you're actually gonna come to standing. So starting from a higher surface just makes the sit to stand component of this a little bit easier. And then you're gonna progress this a little bit further by moving to a lower surface. And again, doing kind of a modified deadlift, kind of half sit to stand, kind of half squat all in one. And you're just gonna stand up. When you get to the top, when you get upright, just check your rod and make sure that it is parallel to the floor. That's how you know that your shoulders are aligned. A lot of times, if you have suffered a stroke or you do have any kind of hemiplegia, you will, your shoulders won't be level and that can also contribute to back pain. So it's a great way, just a great place just to check and make sure that your shoulders are level by looking at the dowel rod and making sure that it's parallel to the ground. Now, if you wanted to advance this a little bit more, a harder way of doing this or a more advanced way of doing this is to put the dowel rod behind your back and do what I call kind of a mini squat or sit to stand with the dowel rod behind your back. Again, you're really isolating those glutes, but with the dowel rod behind your back, it also will help you to keep your chest up. However, when the dowel rod's behind your back, it does make you a little bit more off balance backwards. So you do have to have a little bit more strength to do it this way but this would definitely be my preferred method if at all possible. Now, one last exercise, isolating those glutes. I think I've showed this exercise before, but it is one of my favorites. You're going to do kind of like a hip extension in standing with your back against the wall. Now, the trick to this is keeping your shoulders on the wall and just bringing your hips off of the wall, really focusing on that $100 bill again, or really squeezing that bottom to not lose that $100 bill. And then you're gonna hold it for about five seconds, then just come back to the starting position. And then you can go ahead and do that again. And then that is it. That's the final exercise I'm gonna show today. So what, I went, what we went over today was a good cue to give yourself when you're walking to help main keep all those bones stacked on top of each other. And then just a few different variations of some exercises and how to isolate those that hip extension and get some of the focus off of those low back muscles and onto the bigger muscles in the hips, which have an easier time of helping your body to maintain that upright position. I thank you, I appreciate each and every single one of you. And I'm so grateful for this community. I really feel like we're all learning from each other. So I thank everyone who engages in the comments. We all have something that we can use from our own experiences to help someone else. So I appreciate those of you that do that. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You all have a great day.